Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Amir Hamid and I serve as RingCentral Senior Vice President of Worldwide Solution Sales and Engineering. I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Golden State Warriors head coach, Steve Kerr. We hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. Wow, Steve Kerr. I mean, <laughs> I mean, five-time NBA champion, plus four more and counting as a coach. What an honor it is for me to be here with you today. Um, what has all this winning taught you about the importance of evolving and striving for success? Oh man, I don't know. I've just <laughs> been lucky to you know play with Michael Jordan and Tim Duncan, and to, you know to coach Steph Curry and and Draymond Green, and and um, I'm not sure what it's it's taught me. I think um, you know the, I, I guess what I think of immediately is the importance of. Uh, teamwork and, and being part of something um, bigger than yourself, you know, and, and when you're lucky enough to be in the situations that I've been in, um, you, you feel that magic happen, you know, where everybody's striving for something special and, and you know, feeling valuable, but also aware that it's, um, this is a big operation and if everybody chips in, it gets you know, it gets fun and it it gets powerful, but it's hard to achieve all that. I mean, the, the, everything has to sort of line up right, and I feel like things have lined up right for me. Well, things have lined up right, no doubt. But I mean, you know, I think one of the the keys to your success has been driving a strong culture, right? So, the, can you talk to me a little bit about how you drove this strong culture of innovation within the Golden State Warriors? You know, both on and off the court. Well, again, uh, my background playing for Phil Jackson, playing for Greg Popovich, two of the all-time great coaches, um, they never talked about culture. I just felt it when I walked into the building every day. I felt that I was part of something unique. And what I learned from those guys, um, especially thinking back on it now, is just how um, authentic they were to their own values. And that's what we've tried to do here is really – drive a culture that's very authentic, uh, values-driven, day-to-day operation, where the players feel um, when they come in uh, to the building every day, they feel um, those values thriving. And to me, those values are competition and joy and uh, mindfulness, Um, just these feelings of we're going to go after everything. We're going to have a great time doing it. But we're gonna we're gonna be mindful of you know how to uh, how to get through uh, the difficulty, and then in the midst of all that, if we're compassionate to each other and and to the group, um, it allows us to function really well. And so all those all those values are on display every single day, but it's authentic. authentic. It's not you know hey we got to pretend to be compassionate. No, that's. That's who I am as a leader, and that's who the people I hire on our staff, that's who they are. Um, but every one of them is competitive as hell and wants to win, too. And, and so finding that balance is crucial, but the players have to feel it, and it has to be unique. Absolutely. So, hey, I've, you know, teamwork is critical. I think you alluded to it. I've heard from some of the front office staff that you had this, this thing called strength in numbers. Mm. And can you highlight a specific example where, you know, teamwork and innovation came together to achieve victory for the Warriors? Well, when I took uh, the job back in 2014, we had a really deep team. And, um, and I knew we were going to have to get everybody to buy in to the fact that everybody is going to, contribute and that but that means when one guy's contributing sometimes another guy's on the bench and so I I put a video together for the team it was kind of a uh, a humorous um, but hopefully inspiring preseason video and my friend Marv Albert who I worked with at TNT and in my broadcasting days he he did the voiceover and I used that expression strength in numbers it you know obviously somebody else made that up a long time ago but I really felt like that 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 phrase kind of embodied who we could become and um, maybe one of my proudest moments was at the end of that season when the marketing team actually <laughs> took the expression I was like oh my gosh yeah. it actually and I hadn't thought of it in terms of what it means to the fans you know strength in numbers didn't just mean 
what I was looking for, which was, you know, hey, the 15 guys on this team represents our strength. It ended up representing the 18,000 people in the arena every night. And it was like, wow, this really caught on much more than anything that I had ever dreamt of. So I do think um, some of that is just vision. Like, you know, how are you going to be successful? Um, for us, it was everyone's going to contribute. And then being able to sort of attach a, a mantra that caught was uh, probably lucky more than anything. But, um, but I think the vision of how you're going to achieve something um, is crucial. And then, you know, sort of uh, relaying that vision and, and helping it um, sort of uh, flourish. I love it. So you had the concept, people internalize it, not just your, you know, not just the players, but the broader team, the, the fan base. I mean, and the fan base extends beyond right. Golden State. Like you guys are yeah. a, a massive, uh, well-respected organization. So, all right. So we've talked a little bit about success. Um, can you share a story about a moment of adversity that ultimately led to innovation and contributed to success? Well, about three years ago, we had the worst record in the league. You know, we had all these injuries. We got wiped out. Um, and right from the beginning of the season, we knew we were in some trouble. And um, so our, our coaching staff, we really felt like it was crucial to maintain our culture um, for the players to feel those values, especially when you're losing, not, yes. not just winning. And we knew that based on all the injuries, our product was not going to be great that year. But we felt like it was important to maintain um, our standards, uh, how hard we were going to work, how much fun we were going to have, um, you know, how um, much we were going to pull for each other and, and help guys get better and all those things. And so that year at the trade deadline, we ended up trading six players um, to reduce payroll um, because of the, you know, the lack of success on the court. And most of those guys did not want to leave. And it was really a proud moment because usually if you have the worst record in the league, everybody wants to, to jump ship and go play for a winning team. And, and so it, it, it showed me that we were doing something right. Um, but we knew we had to retool at the same time. And I think I, that's when I really leaned in to our front office and Bob Myers and his staff for advice because we needed some changes. We needed some changes on the coaching staff. We needed some changes on the roster. And I think that's where we really, um, where I leaned on the, the, um, the expertise of Bob, my direct sure. boss. Yeah, yeah. And we collaborated and retooled our roster. And, um, you know, within a couple of years, we were able to come back and win a, win a championship. And it, well, was, it was amazing. It was an amazing <laughs> feeling. Well, that, that is amazing. As you mentioned, you talked about retooling. So, you know, during that time, you know, was there any role in any cutting edge, tech, cutting edge technologies or analytics to kind of help you in your coaching approach as you're retooling? For sure. We really leaned into analytics. And uh, I think, you know, the analytics, um, the, the analytics revolution is really something that's relatively young in the NBA. Probably the last 15 years, it's really... Um, come into play. And the, my first few years of coaching, I had a hard time connecting our coaching staff to the analytics department because you, you have so much data. You're trying to sift through everything and figure out what's meaningful, what's not. And uh, one of the things we did, um, and this was really through the front office, was we, start, we hired a couple of coaches who were really proficient with analytics and that connected our, the two departments and suddenly we were able to sift through all the data much more efficiently and over the last couple of years we've leaned into um, some really important factors analytically um, and it's you know it's sort of uh, detailed boring stuff but um, you know um, how, how we're defending is based on um, efficiency ratings of our opponents uh, from different spots on the floor. So we've shifted our defense to, you know, guard the most vulnerable areas of the floor and try to force teams into attempts from lesser efficient <laughs> spots. And, and, you know, I, we wouldn't have been able to do that nine, ten years ago. Um, but by combining forces and really getting some people on board who were proficient with this stuff, 
Um, it was really helpful. And I, I could give you five or six other examples if they weren't so boring, so I'll just leave <laughs> no, it no, at I, that. I don't find it boring. I'm a geek at heart. Right. So these are actionable analy- you know, actionable yeah. insights, right? So that's amazing. Right, you right. got all this information. How do you yes. sift through it quickly and then act upon it accordingly in the context of an actual game yeah. and players and their profit? That's, that's, that's amazing. So uh, anyways, uh, the next question I had is, you know, innovation often involves taking risks, right? Uh, Any examples where you took a calculated risk as a coach that kind of led to significant success over time? I think think the risk for me felt like um, changing our coaching staff um, when I... I, it felt like it, it felt terrible, but it felt right um, because I, I I knew I needed something different. Um, and I think one of the things I've learned as a leader is that the most important thing is is to get people around you who can help you and who kind of fill your blind spots. And what can be tricky about that is you um, you sometimes have to. Um, let people go who are really good people, but you know you're trying to, to you know move push things forward and um, and get a new perspective. But the, the biggest lesson for me and the biggest thing that I try to um, tell other leaders is um, don't be ashamed of of things that you don't know um, because no one has all the answers. Uh, really, you should embrace the fact that you need new knowledge and that other people have it and that you should empower them. And when you do that, it, it, it actually increases your authority because people see that you're, you're just part of the team and not yes. some other entity that's uh, trying to achieve something for individual accomplishment. Yeah, let's, let's peel the onion. Uh, my next question is, is exactly on that. So how do you in- inspire your team to actually embrace that change, right? And then adapt new yeah. strategies, new techniques. Like, how do, you, how do you get them to embrace that? You know you need to do yeah. it. Because you, you've succeeded, you've succeeded, then you had some adversity, right. and now you're retooling. So how do you get them to, to really embrace that change? I think um, this year we've, we, we're actually in the process of doing uh, some of that. You know, we're trying to cut our turnovers back. We've always been a high turnover team because we're, we're somewhat chaotic in our style, but we like the chaos because Steph and Clay are you know, bombing all these three-pointers. So the more, more possessions we can create, the better. And so we've always played fast and, and loose, but we're no longer the team we were five years ago. Um, our star players are, are no longer in their primes. They're on the back end of their career. Um, a lot of other teams in the league have retooled and have just as much, if not more, talent than us. So we're trying to get our team to play a slightly different style, a slightly more controlled, um, less chaotic. Um, so for us, it was um, showing a lot of uh, important stats and analytics. And, you know, from the first day of training camp, here's here's why we need to change. Here are the areas of real weakness. And then we show highlights from last year uh, to back those points up. And then it becomes a process of, all right, let's shape our vision for this year's team. And um, But we back that up with personnel moves. You know, we want to take better care of the ball. We have Chris Paul now. There's nobody better <laughs> in the NBA yeah, at taking care of the ball. So yeah. so it was really a combination of, of showing the, the numbers, um, t- explaining why, and then making some personnel shifts to match all that stuff. I love that. And, and you know, you, you, you touched on a lot of things because I remember, you know, a Steve Kerr fan as a player, you know, a three-point specialist, right? So there was, that was a specific role that you, you excelled at, at that role at a time in the NBA where there were three-point specialists on every team. And then coming into Golden State with the Splash Brothers, I mean, wow, you know, you revolutionized the game. Now everybody's shooting threes and the game became so much more exciting. You guys innovated that, absolutely. You guys brought that on. You got your championships. Others picked up on that as well. So now, you know, so constant innovation, always looking for the next big thing and evolving and, you know, bringing Chris Paul. Like, wow, you know, I mean, that's the experience, like a floor general to kind of take that to the next level. Uh, You know, amazing. So... Speaking of that, you know, how do you encourage players to think outside the box and, and bring new fresh ideas to the game? Because like you said, you, your, your success is being replicated and copied. So right. now you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta bring in new ideas. Yeah. So how do you do that? Well, for me, I, um, I've always been a collaborator by nature. And, and um, from my first year coaching during timeouts during the game, 
I would sometimes um, just say to the players, what are you seeing out there? What do you feel? Uh, because we can draw up all the strategy we want on the, on the board, but they have to actually execute it. And um, so at key times during that first year, you know, I might come into the huddle and, and say, all right, let's, let's you know, do this X, Y, and Z. But what are you guys feeling? And, you know, um, Draymond, Steph, say, hey, this is what we're seeing. Let's do it this way. And I go, let's do it. You know, let, let you guys, because they have to feel that empowerment. And, and when the ideas came from them, it actually um, was more powerful. And, um, and I think they recognized, too, that they had a stake in all this. I did take one game, I think it was my maybe third year coaching where they weren't listening to me very much, <laughs> and I just had this sort of uh, strange idea of I'm going to let them coach for a game. And um, it wasn't that hard to do because, you know, we had Kevin Durant and Steph sure. Curry and Clay Thompson. <laughs> we had the best players. Firepower, yeah. Yeah, but um, I felt like it might be a good exercise to just say, all right, the board's yours. And, and uh, so I gave them a game. They had to do all the pregame preparation, the scouting report. They had to figure out the matchups, who was guarding whom. And the only thing I did was the substitution patterns. But every time out, they would draw up a play and decide what defense they were in. And it was a fascinating experiment. And, and it was, you know, we won by like 40. It immediately made our staff feel like, well, I guess we don't need to be around much. <laughs> uh, but it was a great exercise. And I think sometimes just, you know, re reminding the players that it's their team it spurs innovation and thought, and, and it gives them the opportunity to, to grow. That's a, that's a great leadership lesson. I've got a large team at Ring Central, and, and always looking to the folks that are on the team doing the job and ask them how it can be done better. How can we delight customers more? You know, how can we be better, innovate right. better? So we don't have all the answers in leadership. We, we absolutely yeah. need, uh, and, and that's a tremendous example. So, you know, the. The, the sports environment, the landscape is rapidly evolving, right? So, so what strategies do you employ to kind of stay ahead of the curve and keep that competitive edge? Honestly, we're hiring a lot of young people. <laughs> <laughs> I really believe that um, the young people uh, have um, the innovation in their heads because they have the advantage of seeing what's already been done. Um, but we have the disadvantage as older uh, coaches, um, people who have been around the game for a long time, of being set in our ways a little bit. And we're hiring a lot of young coaches who are really um, thoughtful about analytics and also how to teach uh, the drill work that we do um, on the practice floor. And, you know, the game evolves. Everything evolves, right? Um, the only way it evolves is with new ideas. And usually new ideas come from younger people because they're looking at things from, from a different standpoint. So I've learned a lot this year um, from our younger coaches uh, how to teach gaining advantages and decision making within the game. We're doing different drills than I ever did under Greg Popovich or Phil Jackson and those are the greatest coaches in the game. So if you don't embrace new ideas um, and a lot of those new ideas coming from younger people then I think you're falling behind. So we're really trying to embrace all the new stuff that, that our young people are bringing us. That's tremendous advice, absolutely. So you've been doing something for a long time, you've been winning at it for a long time, but recognize that the competition is ever getting stronger and, and you need fresh ideas. So right. getting some young folks to do that, do it in my organization as well. I've got some associate yeah. solutions engineers yeah. <laughs> that we bring in. Young folks, great ideas, yeah. have been in the industry before, but boy, do they make a huge impact and help us propel forward. Uh, just, just tremendous. Um, last question that I've got for you. Okay, so what advice would you give to individuals or organizations you know, looking to foster a culture of innovation to achieve success? Well, I think... Um you know, my, my first bit of advice may, may not have that much to do with innovation, but I think it does indirectly. My first bit of advice is hire people who you're excited about seeing every day. You know, when I wake up in the morning, I look forward to seeing every person in our gym, um, fr from the players to my fellow assistants to our training staff. Um, there's something special about being excited to go to work. And... When you have that dynamic in place, um, 
now you can build on that. And I think that's one of the things we've accomplished here. We, we hire really, really good people who not only are smart and have different talents, but more than anything, um, are, are just love being part of a team. Um, you can get the smartest um, person on earth, and if that person doesn't want to be part of a team, I don't really want to work with that person. You know, <laughs> So that's the first, first thing. And then I think... Um, there needs to be a chain of command, but but I think there also needs to be respect for um, the the next generation that's coming. And if you can find that right balance of where the the young group understands, like you have to have structure, um, and you have to have leadership, and and certain people have to make really difficult decisions, but at the same time, th those leaders are embracing um, the new ideas and collaborating. And, that, and they feel that, and everybody feels that every single day. Um, naturally, you just start to build, build momentum. And that's, I, to me, that's where innovation comes because a group of people together are always going to come up with more and better ideas than one person sitting alone. True. So then that comes back to your strength in numbers yeah. again, right? Having the, the collective strength of the individuals. And then, as you mentioned earlier, empowering yes. folks to, to help. Yeah, the decision but it making. can't be anarchy either. <laughs> right? You've got to be controlled, like, 100%. they got to yes. know that I'm in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? 100%, 100%. They really do. And, and, yeah. But uh, if, they're, if they understand that I'm empowering them, and I'm not only empowering them, but embracing their ideas, and then but they need to know that I'm making tough decisions, and that, that is not an easy thing to do. And, you know, someday you're going to be in this seat, and you're going to realize, <laughs> man, this is... Uh, you know, some days are, are really tough in that regard. Um, but I think when there's that kind of awareness and, and um, sort of collaboration um, and a good vibe in the building, I think that's where the innovation comes from. Yeah, I, I think you hit it right there. You know, success breeds further success. Yeah. So clear leadership at the top, but embracing folks for new ideas yeah. because you need new ideas, right? right. The, the competition in the NBA isn't stopping. We got competition all the time, so we, we've got to... We've got to innovate. We've got to come up with new solutions that, again, the analytics would tell us that will drive success or, yeah. in our case, what our customers want, right? That's right. So what, what right. are our customers looking for and making sure that we're developing and striving for those innovations that are going to drive business outcomes for them. That's Ultimately, right. you delight your customers or you delight your audiences, right? Your That's sports right. fans. That's right. And you're going to have uh, success. Yeah, and leaning, leaning into your values during the difficult times um, is what I keep thinking of, you know, when I, when I think of how sports translates to business and, and any other collaborative effort, uh, because nobody wins every game, every game, nobody wins every year, every business has ups and downs. So what, what's happening during the downtime? If you're leaning into your authentic values, it gives you a chance to stay on stable footing and, and kind of get back to, to, you know, a bit more positive results. Absolutely. Either you're winning or you're learning. Right? Yeah, that's the way that's I kind right. of look that's at it. That's exactly right. Um, Steve, I just want to thank you. It's been, a, it's been a really enlightening. I've learned a lot from your leadership style. Very thank inspirational. You. I want to thank you for your time. Appreciate it.